Well, it's a big show. Welcome to the fade route. It's a big bad show tonight. With DNZ. Yeah, it's a big show. Here are your hosts. DNZ. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Fade Route with DNZ. I am Z and we got a great show for you. We're talking about the final four. A little chalky. A little chalky. Not gonna lie. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets and the message it'll send the NBA if they don't do anything for most of the year and win a championship. And we are going to order up the best baseball teams coming out of the offseason. But we have to start with some huge breaking news coming out of Florida, particularly Tampa Bay. Buccaneers head coach Bruce Arians is retiring after three seasons as head coach, moving into a front office role with the organization, as per ESPN's Jeff Darlington. He is giving up the position, and Todd Bowles, yes, that Todd Bowles, is taking over as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bowles with his his 26 and 41 career record. Yes, those were three miserable years with the Jets, one good year with the Jets, and three games as an interim with the Dolphins in 2011. But this is some breaking news that is potentially huge. Because if you really think about it, what does this mean for the future of Tom Brady? And it opens up the door to speculation. Because Bowles is an Arians guy. And if Brady knew that this may have happened, or there was some kind of inkling that Arians would step aside and that Bowles would be the guy over Byron Leftwich, would Tom Brady have come back? I'm not 100% sure on that. You also have to take into account the speculation that Tom Brady would end up in Miami. And that kind of opens the door. It opens up Pandora's box again. If this was not a move that Brady signed off on when he agreed to come back, would Tampa Bay flip Brady to the Dolphins? I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's plenty of smoke around Brady to the Dolphins. And it just so happens that the Dolphins are loaded up right now. And we speculated last week, I speculated that they were a quarterback away. And, (laughs) I mean... That would be a hell of a get if they could get one of the greatest, if not the greatest quarterbacks of all time, even on a short-term rental. And, you know, we were speculating that he may also have some future ownership stake here. So this is a potentially huge move, and it makes the situation in Tampa, Miami, possibly even San Francisco, seem all the more unsettled. And here he is. I have known this guy since our days on Carousel Shoes. Flight crew through and through. The last QB in St. John's history. What's up, D? How's it going, man? Hey, we definitely had to change the opening and pretty much the course of this whole show with the breaking news. Yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, it opens up so many things, right? It's first of all, did this request come from Tom Brady? I mean, we know that he gave the GM a whole list of things that he wanted for when he came back. So was this one of the requests is that he didn't want to, he didn't want Bruce Arians to be the head coach anymore. He wanted Todd Bowles or Byron Leftwich to be the head coach of the team. The other part is, is 
maybe this was not part of Brady's plan. Maybe this was uh, something like, oh, Bruce is planning on stepping down. I don't want to play for the Bucks next season, but here's who I do want to play for. You know, I want to play for the 49ers and finish my career. Or, wow, I want to go play for the Dolphins. And maybe the Dolphins already knew this, which is what made them go get Tyreek Hill. We're like, okay, we got Tyreek Hill, we got Jalen Waddle, and we're about to trade for Tom Brady. Go get him. <laughs> they certainly I mean, look a lot better than they do with Tua under center, that's for sure. And, as, and so if you're the Bucks, it's like, okay, yeah, we'll take Tua, right? And then you either keep him as your quarterback or you go and flip Tua for Jimmy G, right? For a proven guy because that's the guy you want. And who's who better to succeed Brady in Tampa than the guy who was supposed to succeed him in, in New England? And uh, I just – this is why I just when I thought like – the NFL offseason was really done after, you know, the Tyree Kill trade, the Monte Adams trade. This comes out, I mean, th- those are the two those are two different scenarios I'm imagining. Yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, yes, Tom Brady's 45 years old, but if I am if I'm Jason Light, if I'm the GM of the Bucks, I gotta get in addition to Tua just to have a, a stopgap because Kyle Trask isn't ready yet. Blaine Gabbard is Blaine Gabbard. And, right. you know, I would at least need him back. And Tom Brady's still worth a first-round pick. Like, uh, he's 45. Yeah, I get that. But he's still playing a high level of football. It's not like the drop-off has been so severe like Matt Ryan, where his market was totally tanked, where you could only get a third. You're going to get multiple picks for Tom Brady, depending on, you know, who is desperate enough to call and make an offer. Now, you like you just mentioned, you know, there's no guarantee that Tua even sticks with Tampa Bay because, you know, that offense is pretty, I mean, it's pretty well designed for Jimmy G. Jimmy G is very similar in body type, he's similar in size, he's similar in arm strength. I mean, there's a reason why that Belichick wanted to take Jimmy G and make him Tom Brady's successor. They have so many qualities that are similar. So, I mean, I would definitely consider, if I'm Jason Light, I would definitely consider, you know, working a three team trade. Or working, you know, a secondary trade after the fact and recoup a draft pick, like two and a draft pick for, for Jimmy. I think that would, or just Jimmy for two is straight up. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how you would work the machinations of the deal, but, you know, that way you can have the offense that Kyle Shanahan wants to run because clearly he wants to run a more mobile offense. Otherwise, you wouldn't have taken Trey Lance. So, you know, your gut reaction right now, D, as of right now, does Brady even suit up this year for Tampa Bay? No, no, I can't. I can't see it. I can't see him playing for Todd Bowles. And the other part is, is man, I mean, Derek Carr is on his last year in Oakland. Could, could he get traded to Oakland? And and play for the Raiders and Devontae Adams. Like, there's so many possibilities here. And you know, this was you know this was the breaking news that you know we had opened the show with. But with the other breaking news that happened a couple of days ago was that the NFL trade you know changed their overtime rules. Now in the playoffs, each team was guaranteed at least one possession in overtime, and then sudden death will ensue after each team gets one possession. So what did you think about the new overtime rules? Well, this is in response to the Buffalo Bills not touching the ball in overtime. Uh, And frankly, I was fine with the original overtime rule. You know, I was fine with sudden death. I was fine with you running the ball three times and kicking a field goal. Everybody goes home. 
I that is I, I, that's fine by me. I'm okay with that. You had the opportunity if you wanted fair. You had the opportunity in regulation time. That's my opinion. Like you get to overtime, all bets are off. But I get where they're going. I understand what they're trying to do. I'm not a fan. And frankly, like they're hedging their bets anyway because it's not a it's it's not a regular season rule. The NFL is okay with ties. So I, I'm just I'm not a fan. I firmly believe that you get your shot in regulation and the chips fall where they may in overtime. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think it's garbage. I think it's trash. It's straight trash. And, you know, this is all coming because they want everybody to have a chance. Well, guess what? You had a chance for four quarters. All it does is prolong the inevitable, right? Mm-hmm. If, if the Buffalo Bills game where it was the Bills and the, and the Chiefs, if they went and played out the scenario where, okay, the Chiefs came down and scored, Josh Allen gets the ball, he scores. Guess what? Pat Mahomes is going to get the ball back, and he's going to score and win the game. Why are we prolonging the inevitable? Like, I, this got voted down, this got voted on 29-3. to 3. Of the three teams that were opposed to it was the Pittsburgh Steelers, with Mike Tomlin saying... I don't fear sudden death. And I think that's the best motto. That's the best line. That's how I feel about it. Listen, if you have a problem with the way overtime is going to work, like you're worried about the first team getting the ball, scoring, and you lose, then don't go into overtime. When you score in the fourth quarter, go for two. When you get the ball in the fourth quarter, hold on to it. Or how about this? Why don't you make a stop? How about play some defense? Like, why is it that offense prevails and at no point does someone have to put their heels on the ground and play defense i think it's lazy i think it's it's weak and i think it's garbage and the and the only reason why they're doing this is because they see the excitement it could bring and they can see how how um it could prolong a game for a team and that's just that's just not the way to go about it no absolutely not and realistically you're, they've been legislating defense out of the game for years. They, they've turned, when they couldn't legislate defense anymore, they turned to special teams, right? They started messing with the kickoff. They're going to mess off, They're going to mess with punt returns. Now you're dealing with the, as part of the overtime rule, you had the field goal could not end the game. Can we just... Wasn't that enough? Yeah, like, you're, you're, ba- you're bastardizing the game. Like, just let the game play out. If just it's gonna it be, sh- if it's gonna be a shootout, it's gonna be a shootout. But both teams get the opportunity in regulation. That's the point. Yeah, That's the somebody, whole point. You, uh, you got uh, your shot. Yeah, you had your chance. You had plenty of them actually, and change the way you go about it. Like. Change the way, change your scheme. Change like there's there are different ways to. If you're so worried about the overtime rule and how it's going to play out, there's better ways to go about it. I was actually in favor of uh, changing, getting rid of the coin toss. How about this? The visitors, the visitors get the ball to start the game, or the visitors get the the choice if they want the ball or to kick off at the start of the game. And you know what? If we go to overtime, the home team gets the ball first. That Easy changes enough. things. That changes things, right? Mm-hmm. That makes you think. Well, you know what? I don't want to go into overtime. So when I score with a minute and a half left, and I'm up by six, I'm gonna go for two because it behooves me to go for two. Because now, even if this team comes downfield, and if I have a chance, I have to stop this team from scoring, and then they're gonna have to go for two on me to tie it. That's taking a risk. That's taking a chance. Just laying down on your back like this, you know. And somebody tried to tell me, well. You know, when baseball goes to extra innings, each team gets a chance to hit. I was like, no, no, no. You can't compare football to baseball. First of all, there's a lot more scoring in football, number one. Number two, the game is drastically different in the 10th inning of a baseball game than in the fourth quarter of a football game. I mean, you've gone through numerous pitchers. 
a lot of players have been double switched or have come out. Like there's a lot of different there's a lot of different factors. There's a lot of different factors at play there. And in baseball, the visitors get the first chance and then the home team gets the last chance. That's how it works. So if you want to if you want to sum up things similar to a baseball model, then do as I said. Give the visiting team the the ball or the choice in the beginning of the game, but if we go to overtime, home team gets the ball. That changes things. That changes things. Need a little inspiration in the kitchen? Want to try something new? Or maybe you just need a new YouTube cooking show to binge? Well, I have the answer for all three. As You Eat It, hosted by me, Z. I invite you into my home and show you methods designed to empower and inspire you in the kitchen. Cook how you want to cook. Eat how you want to eat. Eat as you eat it. That's As You Eat It, available only on YouTube. AZ. You eat it. Check it out and let's get cooking. But you know what? We, we we buried what was supposed to be the lead to the show, and that's the NCAA tournament. The final four teams are set. Villanova will be taking on Kansas, and Duke will be taking on North Carolina. What do you think of our blue blood final four teams? And who will survive and advance? Pretty chalky. Pretty, pretty chalky. Yes, I'm aware that UNC is a 9 seed, 8 seed. It doesn't matter. It's still UNC. It's a legacy. And it's the first time that Duke and UNC will actually ever meet in the NCAA tournament. And I think it's actually apropos in Coach K's last season. And what I think it's interesting is that Hubert Davis, doing a heck of a job, buddy. Way to go. Way to go. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, four blue blood died in the wool powerhouses. And, yeah, I frankly have no interest <laughs> Just because the yep. best story was St. Peter's. Yep. And, I mean, they didn't have the firepower. Just, I mean, if you look at Kansas, for example, they're benefiting from a transfer. What what player would enter the transfer portal and say, yes, St. Peter's, give me Jersey City. Give me Jersey City and a chance to maybe compete in the MAC tournament. I'm in. You know, I, I'm I'm absolutely in for that. So, you know, I have very little interest in this. I'm hoping that Villanova pulls it off just because, A, they're local. B, Jay Wright's a Hofstra guy. So, we you know, we have a little skin in the game with him. And I... I don't friend the show coach we love you we'd love to have you on gotta up that suit game I, I get it's comfortable but you know like you look so dapper and I can't I, I get that Bill Self I get that you know he brought a tile to Lawrence but you know I don't trust him I, I just don't I, I he won a title and I don't trust him but as yeah, far I as mean, you, as yeah, you I mean, see Duke, I'm, I'm going yeah. with Duke. Like, I, I had that yeah. inkling, I had that feeling, and I talked myself out. But, like, Duke, this far, there's no reason Duke and Villanova can't meet in the finals. Yeah, I mean, St. Peter's was a nice story, but let's be real. A 15th seed was not going to advance to the final four. It just, it's, it just, the odds, it, it's never happened. It's not going to happen, right? Uh, but kudos and, to Holloway. He parlayed that into the Seton Hall job. That was another yeah. little bit of breaking news. I was just going to say that. Yeah. So he's he's coming to the he's coming to the Big East, which is great. Um, yeah. For me, uh, see, here's the deal with these four teams. Uh, back in the day, I dated a girl who went to Villanova. She broke up with me for a guy who was going to UNC. They got married, had kids. Both of them are extremely successful now. So for this reason, 
I have to root for Duke, and I have to root Ooh. for Kansas, and I can't see it any other way. Like these are the teams that have to win this weekend. I can't, I can't put my emotions aside. I can't say, well, you know, you know, the Villanova they got that kid Colin Gillespie. He's a great guard. Feels like he's been there for like six years. I think he's gonna take it to Kansas. I can't. I have to. I have to say, you know what? Kansas has David McCormick. He's a big guy, and I'm sure Villanova is gonna give. He's gonna give Villanova a problem. I can't say that. You know, Hubert Davis has done a great job rallying his team and should have no problem taking down Duke. But I can't say that. I I have this Duke has to win this game, and I'm a U. I'm a fan of UNC. In any other circumstance, I would root for them on a regular game, rivalry game. But here we go, Final Four. I cannot have North Carolina face Villanova in the Final Four. <laughs> no, no, not, not based on that information. No, so no way, oh, but say. If, but if you want to guarantee Duke a championship. Make sure they're playing Kansas because Bill Self will choke that game away. Yeah, I mean, and, and I have bad history with Kansas for like six years straight. I chose them to like win the national championship and they bowed out early each time. And then the one year I didn't pick them, they went and they won it. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So I am done with Kansas. But I do, I, but personally, I do like Kansas. I like the Jayhawks. I do like them as a team. And, uh, and uh, like we talked about, Jay Wright, friend of the program. We love Jay Wright, uh, best dressed, co- best dressed coach in, in all of sports. But uh, I hope he dies like a dog this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Avoid messy accidents. Get better stopping power with your brake pads, Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road, and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto, we really care about what's under your hood. But switching from college hoops to the pros, New York City has made an exception for athletes and entertainers regarding the mask mandates and the vaccines and things like that. So, Yankee players, Met players, Knicks, and most importantly, Kyrie Irving can now play home games in New York without being vaccinated. Now, the Nets currently sit in the eighth spot with Durant missing two months. Ben Simmons hasn't played yet, and he may not play. He has a herniated disc in his back. Kyrie has missed most of the year because, well, voluntarily, we'll say it just like that, voluntarily, if the Nets win the chip, what message does this send to the NBA? It says load management is effective. It says the regular season is too long. And it says seeding doesn't matter. I think I think that if the Nets were to come out of this and get to the Eastern Conference Finals or even win the championship, I think this is this is a bad message for the NBA. This is a bad message. Listen, it, the owners and the NBA players don't care. But season ticket holders and people who purchase tickets to regular season games should care. Because they are purchasing tickets, because they're no longer purchasing tickets to a game. They're purchasing tickets to a show, not a competitive basketball game that you're going to see the highest level of talent. Because on any given night, Kyrie Irving could say, Oh, my foot hurts. Can I go to the nurse? I can't play. <laughs> or, you know, I, or, um, you know what? This is the back to back. We won yesterday. I don't really need to play today because. By me saying those things and doing those things, my team is still successful. I'm still in the fifth spot, the eighth spot, the fourth spot, a play-in game. I still have a chance to compete for a championship. Because I'm telling you right now, once they get to the playoffs, you're not going to hear anything about load management. You're not going to hear anything about travel. You're not going to hear anything about people being tired. Because now you're going to have to play. So... If the only thing that matters is playoffs, then what, why are we putting so? Why do we have so many regular season games? And why is there so much stress put on the regular season? So I think it'll be a bad look for the NBA, and I don't think they get it. I don't think they understand it. Well, like I said in the production meeting, all this does is embolden superstar players to play even less than they already do. 
They don't play back to back for the most part. They won't play with the slightest of injury. They'll cite load management and the salaries just go up. Like you are reaping in so much with doing less. Like that just is incongruous to me. And it particularly emboldens Kyrie Irving because now he's fresh as a daisy. And going into the playoffs, you know, this is very similar to what happened last year with the Lightning when they invite when they activated Nikita Kucherov off of, off of long-term IR, circumventing the salary cap rule. This is just a bad precedent set by the NBA and I don't real I don't think the fans realize how badly they're getting screwed by the talent in the NBA. People come to see these players. It's a star-driven league. Who was the I... last superstar player that actually felt that, you know, felt that obligation to play? Who who was who is actually feeling that obligation now because people put their hard-earned money down to go see these players and then oh, load management they're not going to be they're not going to be out. They're not going to be out there for you. Just, yeah, it's I mean, not right. They don't they don't but they don't care because this is the result. I mean, come on, the Nets, the Nets have the potential of being an 8 seed. They could knock out the number one seed of the NBA playoffs. Could you imagine if that happened? If in the first round, the Nets, all healthy, all able to play, take on the Bucks and beat them in six games. Or, or yeah, because it's seven series. It's still in seven series now, right? So yeah. beat them in seven games. Or who's the other team? The Celtics, which is a team they probably could beat if the Celtics were the one seed. Or the Heat, who's the Heat is the number one seed right now. That's your reward, Miami Heat, for playing so hard and getting the number one seed all year. You draw the Nets in the first round with Kevin Durant, the best player in the league, and and a an arrested Kyrie Irving. Right? Just you put you 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 made the regular season worthless. And I remember a couple of years ago. I drove to Cleveland to watch the Cavs play the Warriors. And it was a rematch of the finals the year before with Kevin Durant and company. And and LeBron now had Dwayne Wade on his team and all those guys. Now, imagine I drove six, I think it was six hours, six hours to Cleveland to find out when I got there that Kevin Durant's on load management. <laughs> like... What? That would yeah. be a, that would be a, or Clay Clay Thompson is resting today. What? He has a sore thumb. <laughs> so, you know, things like that are are extremely frustrating. If you've ever listened to a podcast and thought to yourself, "Hey, I can do this," then do I have the tools for you? If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. No specialty training, no specialty programs needed. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Plus, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. How cool is that? It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Go to anchor.fm and get started today. That's anchor.fm. What are you waiting for? Download the app. But two players that are not playing right now and their teams need them desperately is LeBron James and Anthony Davis. LeBron James and the Lakers are currently sitting in the 10th or maybe even the 11th seed at this point right now and are in jeopardy of missing the playing game. The season seems to be a wash. LeBron's eligible to opt out or sign an extension in August. How do the Lakers get better for next season with no draft picks and no cap space? 
So if the season ended today, the Lakers would play the Spurs for the right to be the 10th seed. So that's how how the mighty have fallen for both of these franchises, right? Think about where the Spurs were. Think about where the Lakers were. The Lakers, a few seasons removed from a championship. So the roster's flawed. We can go over it, you know. We can talk about it until we're blue in the face. Trading for Anthony Davis was risky because of his injury history. They did it anyway. Trading for Russell Westbrook, not knowing about whether or not he would fit in with the team and giving up a significant amount of assets. It was risky, but they did it anyway. Loading this team up with veteran players like the rotting corpse of Carmelo, Trevor Ariza, Dwight Howard. Risky, but they did it anyway. And it blew up in their face. LeBron is most likely going to end up in Cleveland next year because that's what he, apparently that's what he does. He goes elsewhere, then back to Cleveland, then elsewhere again. It's hard to say. It's hard to say where they go because what is Anthony Davis's value, right? If I'm a team, I'm not touching him because of his injury history. The fact that, you know, he's he's out now. Like, he's brittle. The guy is brittle. Westbrook, it hasn't been a good year. Like, (laughs) you may want to trade him. You're getting 10 cents on the dollar. You're not getting the value that you gave up for him. You're not getting a Kyle Kuzma. Oh, wait, you had Kyle Kuzma. Hello? So, I mean, the only thing that you could possibly do is sell low on Westbrook and work a sign and trade. Sign LeBron, trade them all. Like, that's probably the only thing you could do. And then let some of these contracts die on the vine and suck for a little while. But are the are the Lakers and are Laker fans too proud to suck for a while? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, Brian in- Windhorse had an interesting take on this. He said, like, you know, it seems like LeBron moves on every four years. Essentially, when a team is depleted in draft picks and depleted in talent, that's when he moves on to the next place. He did that in Cleveland. He did it in Miami. He did it in Cleveland again. And now it looks like he might be doing it in L.A. again. Uh, I mean, Rob Palenka did a terrible job of putting this team together. We talked about that in the offseason. We didn't really have high hopes for this team, even though other people saw them as facing the Nets in the championship. (laughs) Mm. Um, But how do the Lakers get better? I know you're saying Anthony Davis doesn't have value, but I do think he does. I think he has value. Okay, I think you could trade Anthony Davis for like a Dame Lillard and picks. I think you could trade Anthony Davis for. I think you could trade him to the Knicks for picks. Uh, Would you I, fuck with him and send him back to New Orleans for Zion? No, no, because I don't. Because <laughs> I don't think Zion's worth a damn. I don't think that guy's worth a damn, and that's why he's not playing. Because he's not worth a damn, and while people think he's worth a damn, let them think that so we can trade him and get something for him. Uh, we would have we would have known it by now if he was worth a damn. Um, the other option is to trade LeBron, like you said, to the Cavs for picks and players. I mean, you're just you're not gonna com- you're not gonna be able to compete. And I, you know, everyone says that he's gonna come. LeBron's gonna come back to the Lakers because he likes living in LA. His son goes to Sierra Canyon High School, which is $37,000 a year. And it's $70,000 with room and board. Oh, wow. So I, the, own a, I own a prep and Ford and prep eat your hearts out. And wow, $37,000. So, so now we know where Bel Air Academy was modeled after on the front Wow. Ends. My wow. goodness. It's what, uh, and I, I, did some, I somewhat believe that and I somewhat don't. I don't. He can always, he can always leave his son there and just go and play where he's got to play. Um, 
but there there's no future for the Lakers in which they succeed. Um, I can't imagine Anthony Davis coming back even next year, playing 82 games and winning. Right? I don't see them. I don't see them ever competing as high as the Suns are competing right now, or as good as the Nuggets are. And you're not going to beat like a good Philly team. Like it, it's really over. I think, you know, Palenka's done. Russ Westbrook is bad. They can't win. They can't compete. And I just, I also think this is a bad look for LeBron. Four time missing the playoffs. Magic and Magic and Jordan. No, Jordan. Jordan. Did Jordan miss the playoffs? I don't think Jordan missed. But the, the playoffs Wizards, either. probably. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. With the Wizards, but, but Magic never missed it. Magic never missed no. the playoffs. You know, so, so I think this is a bad look for LeBron. It's an extremely bad look for LeBron. Absolutely it is. But, you know, this is the downside of LeBron as GM, right? It's the running joke. I, I think Carmelo even said that. He's like, you're the GM, man. But you can do what you want. The problem is that these are the moves he made. They were win-now moves. The problem with these win-now moves is, one, this is a great roster five years ago. And two... They're not winning. And number three, you're getting old too. LeBron is getting old. Sorry. 38 ain't 28. It's just that's the nature of the beast. But you move him to a team like Cleveland's on the rise. Cleveland's in that play-in tournament right now, right? You put that you put him on that team, they're easily beating the Nets. LeBron will will his way to beat the Nets. Like Cleveland is gonna would win that tournament. They would win the play in, and they'd have a fighting chance against the Bucks. They because I would say they were the seventh seed. But I mean, we'll see where they are. But um, the Celtics are another team that we had buried. Well, it looks bad on us because the Celtics are eight and two in their last ten. They've been, you know, oscillating between first and fourth in the Eastern standings. But they just lost their center, Robert Williams the third. Is this a big deal, little deal, or no deal at all? I mean, as long as long as they they capture the number one, as long as they don't capture the number one or number two spot, we should be fine. I'm going to say no deal. As long as he comes back to play the box, the 76ers or the Nets, they'll be fine. They definitely need him. He's their enforcer as a defensive player. It's unbelievable how well they play together. They actually remind me of the Pistons. The Pistons from like, uh, was it like 2005, 2006, 2007? Like Ben Wallace, Chauncey Billups, um, uh, Tej- Tejon Prince. Like it reminds me of that team. Like they don't have superstars, but they play solid together. They, actually, Jason Tatum is like almost like their Rip Hamilton. He's their scorer. And... You know, Marcus Smart's done a great job picking up the point guard position. So I don't think it's a big deal as long as he can come back to play one of those top tier teams. I I would say it's no deal as well, just from the simple standpoint that I'm more concerned with the fact of who they're playing in the playoffs if the season ended today. And they'd be drawing the Raptors. I want to know, I would want to know, and I want to make sure that my guys were all going to be able to play. Because Canada has that strict vaccine and health protocol. So that, that would be my major concern. Williams, I mean, he's a solid player. He's a rebounder. He'll get you your 10 points. You know, he's not going to light the world on fire. He's very much in the vein of like a Kendrick Perkins, you know. He'll he'll get what you he'll get what you need. He'll do the dirty work that other players on that roster won't necessarily do. And I mean, that could be a you know that could be a nice little foil for you know a guy like Giannis if they make it if they advance in the playoffs because. You want to make it difficult to operate down low and force people out so that, you know, they can shoot. Giannis is very physical down low. 
So if you match body with body, physical with physical, you might be able to kind of work with that a little bit. But I mean, kudos to the Celtics. They are definitely, they're ascending at the right time. But I, I, I just, I don't like their overall chances with or without Robert Williams. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran-owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that D&Z sent you. Moving on to baseball, Mike Clevenger of the San Diego Padres. He's coming back from his second Tommy John. Second. He'll probably be throwing 108 miles an hour. (laughs) The Twins, meanwhile just signed Chris Archer. Chris Archer of Tampa Bay fame, of Thoracic Outlet fame. That Chris Archer. He only started five games due to injury. So, of these two guys, which player is having a better season next year? What are the twins doing, man? Like, what are you, what are you guys doing? Are you, are you trying to win? Are you not trying to win? Chris Archer? Really? Is this, like, 2017 like uh i mean what's the better the better the, i, I want to see clevenger succeed i want to see the padres compete i want to see them play the dodgers i want to i actually want to see them play against the, the braves the, the, the giants who surprised everybody last year so i want to see them compete on a high level so i i'm gonna say clevenger is gonna have the better season and I just don't know what the Twins are doing. I It seems like they're just picking up players to trade in the middle of the year. Uh, yes. You can't trade for draft picks. Do you guys know that? Like, you could, you could trade for prospects. But I don't know who's going to give you stuff for Chris Archer unless he's, like, 11-0 sporting a 2 ERA in the Central against, like, the White Sox. <laughs> I mean, uh, so I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I go with Clevenger. I think he has better upside. Uh, For some reason, Archer just hasn't been the same since Tampa. Well, if we're looking at... If we're looking at the depth chart, right? Kenta Maeda being out is definitely an issue. Everybody gets moved up one. So that makes Sonny Gray your ace. The immortal Sonny Gray. Then you have Dylan Bundy. You're slotting Archer in as your three. I'm not slotting in Archer as three. Based on on performance in recent years, he's a four. He's maybe a five. But they don't. They re- I mean, Randy Dobnik, you have the Uber driver, the guy who was an Uber driver, but somehow made it back to the bigs. Then you're looking at guys like Joe Ryan, Bailey Ober, Griffin Jacks, like prospects. Like you, you don't have guys that are tried and true, and the ones you do are just mediocre at best. With Clevenger, what makes this interesting is the team that he's on, right? You don't necessarily need to rush Clevenger back. Granted, he said, you know, he got bombed today, and his response was, I'll be ready when the lights are on bright. Which is fine. You can have that attitude. Mike Clevenger has certainly earned it. He's certainly perfect. Okay, Mike. Okay. You know, he's. I admire the confidence. And realistically, till Clevenger gets back to Clevenger form, you can slot him realistically as your four. He's an ace, and he could be a four because you got Darvish, you got Snell, you got Musgrove, you have Paddock, you have Weathers. You have, they brought in Nick Martinez as a depth piece because A.J. Preller is afraid of bringing up Mackenzie Gore. He's afraid. I'm just going to flat out say it. A.J., bring him up. 
Stop manipulating his service time. Let the kid pitch. That is six or seven deep. You can raw. You can have Mike Clevenger take his sweet ass time back. Yeah. And it's guaranteed that he'll have a better. I mean, he'll have a better season. He's going to have a better career than Chris Archer, and it, it's really it's not even close. It really isn't close at all. Because look at the expectations in the lineup. Padres are just light years ahead of the Twins. And like you said, what the hell are the Twins doing? When they know, please let us know. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave from the classic OB to Dutch Apple to Campfire S'mores and many more. Check out their website, sweetlifebrownieco.com, for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook too at Sweet Life Brownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043 and tell them D&Z sent you. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co. Because there's always room for a brownie. Speaking of when you know, let us know. Mike McDaniel of the Miami Dolphins. Boy, does that breaking news really change this topic, by the way. Yeah. So at the owners' meetings, right, Mike McDaniel said that Tua and Teddy Bridgewater know their roles on this team for the 2022 season. You guys are trade pieces. We're going to get Brady. (laughs) Wise man once said, know your role and shut your mouth. The Dolphins have given Tua, or Teddy, or Tom, all the weapons he, they need to succeed. So how many games are Tua and Teddy actually going to start for the Dolphins this year? Or did we did we <laughs> kind of wreck this topic already by throwing out the Brady to Dol- the Dolphins rumor? Zero. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no. Assume, assuming, assuming the Brady thing doesn't happen, I I think Teddy Teddy's, Teddy's just good. Like, he's good. He doesn't turn over the ball. He runs the offense. So, I'm going to go with Teddy going 5-1 and one as a starter. And then I say Tua plays the other games. So, I'm saying Teddy starts 6 games. Tua starts 12 games. Now, what point of the season does this happen? I don't know. <laughs> but And so, I don't know if Tua is going to have a winning record. But that's what, I, that's what I project for the season. Either one. Flip a coin. Regardless of who starts, they'll be injured by the third game. The other will be in. Yeah, I could see that. So you can, I can definitely see closer to an even split. I mean, you're looking at, you know, you're definitely looking at 17 games. So uh, yet nine, one starts nine, one starts eight. I can definitely see a scenario where that happens. I can also see like a Ryan Fitzpatrick situation where, you know, they blow their knee out in the first quarter of week one. So, you know, it's a very murky situation. And this team has expectations. This team is like, they're fixing to do some stuff. And they made the improvements. They were 30th in the league in rushing. They were 17th in the league in passing. They were mediocre. But they the quarterback is certainly holding them back. I think that if Tua and Bridge and Teddy are going to be there, I think Teddy gives you a better chance to win. That's me. I like a more stable presence than Tua. But I don't know, the Tom th- the Tom Brady thing, it gives me so much pause. It's the only not- problem I have with the only problem I have with with 
Teddy is if you don't think Tua can get the ball downfield, Teddy can, can definitely can't get the ball downfield. And they got a guy now that's 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 his best. That's the best thing he does is get downfield. Uh, the good thing about Teddy is he's not going to turn the ball over. He's in one out. So in your scenario, I can see Tua starting out one and two, getting hurt. Teddy coming on and going like five and one, and then the decision is like, okay, Tua is healthy. Does he come back? Do we stick with Teddy? And in that scenario, I don't know. You stick with Teddy, he loses the first round of the playoffs. You go with Tua, he gets hurt again. Right, and then Teddy's back in anyway. And Teddy's back in anyway. So. But you're looking at, you know. This team should be in contention for at least a wild card. So their their main competition is the Patriots. I wouldn't put them. I wouldn't say they're they're close to the Bills. I would say they're competing with the Patriots in that division. And with Tua and Teddy, I, I don't see it. I, I just don't see it. Now you put Brady in that mix. All of a sudden they're leapfrogging the Patriots, and now they're competing with the Buffalo Bills. Like, that ch- that's a narrative changer. That's a game-changing move if, if the Miami Dolphins listen to us. And I'm just saying, guys, uh, you know, the first advice is free. That's all I'm saying. Next time, you got to pay us a consulting fee. Is your hair thinning or is your hairline receding? Scalp micropigmentation will fill in the areas where your hair is missing by creating a short buzz cut look. Micropigmentation is a non-invasive procedure that will create the illusion of hair follicles for 7 to 10 years. For people with alopecia, this could be a permanent fix. For people with scars on their scalp, this is a great way to camouflage a scar. Don't lose confidence or feel like you need to wear a hat wherever you go. Marquez Studio is located in the Bronx and is open for all your scalp micropigmentation needs. Consultations are free and appointments can be made any day of the week. Get your hairline back with scalp micropigmentation. The techs at Marquez Studio have over 30 years of hair cutting experience and can assist you with all of your questions. Call to schedule a consultation today, 646-221-8728. You can also visit them on Instagram at Bronx Marquez to see their gallery and view all their satisfied customers. Again, that is Marquez Studio, located in the Bronx, New York, 646-221-8728. More or less. All right, boys and girls. We liked it so much last week. We're going to do it again. We got a statement. And it's either more or less likely that it's going to happen. More or less. The Giants will act on one of the trade calls they receive for Saquon Barkley. I mean, they should, right? Uh, this this all comes up because their GM said that he's he's received multiple calls about Barkley. He hasn't made any calls about Barkley. Uh, this is his last season on his rookie deal, and regardless of how he plays, you can't re-sign him. You can't no you way. Can't ex- you can't extend him. I think it gets more and more likely every day. We get close as we get closer and closer to the draft. That he's going to get traded. So I'm going to say more likely. I'm going to go more likely as well. Uh, the Giants are tearing it down. There are rumors like Pat Lennon of the Daily News is floating out there. That the Giants are you know, getting closer and closer to trading James Bradbury. Uh, they're liking Sauce Gardner with that, with their uh, first draft pick in the, in the upcoming draft. And... You're not going anywhere with Saquon. He's not coming back. You're not going to re-sign him. So the best thing you can do is try and re- try and recoup. Again, I would say at least a third round. If you want to even make it a conditional third rounder, that's fine. But 
you can't really get much right now because of the injuries and how you know how his his career has gone now when you look around the league who is going to call the giants and think think that Saquon Barkley in their system is going to be the guy that Dave Gettleman thought he was going to be. I, off the top of my head, I can't think of anybody. Maybe, oh, maybe that... the Bears, maybe Chicago, like uh, maybe Kansas City, but they just got Rojo. Um, maybe the Rams. I mean, you have there are a lot of maybes out there. Not a lot of yes, slam dunk, definitely. How about the Bills? Why not the Bills? Why wouldn't the Bills want a running back? They they're not sold on Zach Moss, and they're not going to win anything with Singletary. But that's the thing. They have they've gotten this far without a running game. They may they may be convinced that they don't really need a running game. Their best running back is their quarterback, and that's a dangerous mindset. It, it depends on the asking price, you know. Uh, I. Would the Bills be willing to give up a third-round pick for Saquon Barkley or maybe a fifth and either Singletary or Moss? Like, would would they be willing to do that? Possibly. I don't know. And, you know, I'm not 100% sure it makes their team all that better. But it's worth listening. And it's it's something that should be explored. And... If the right deal comes along, Joe Shane, just make the deal. Make the smart move. More or less, the Niners will receive a call for Jimmy G before the regular season starts. Now, this comes because John Lynch said he has he has not received any calls for Jimmy G. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt, saying the asking price was too high. But now he's saying that he's not received any calls at all. I think that's very alarming. So I'm going to say less likely. I have to imagine a team like the Raiders, the Colts, or the Patriots will call at some point, especially if their guy gets hurt. But it seems that that shoulder injury has scared everyone away. Yeah, uh, I think I'm thinking less likely as well, just from the health standpoint. It makes you wonder because, you know, he has that winning intangible. He absolutely does. We have, it's well documented what we think of Jimmy G as a winner. As a quarterback, sometimes it's a little, it's a little eh. It's definitely a little eh. But that shoulder injury, that shoulder, and we're going to have to see where, you know, the thread that we've been weaving throughout the entire show of the Brady scenario, if anything comes of that. Tua, he may end up as part of that. He may end up in there. Does Carolina call? I mean, there's an, uh, the GM of Carolina was interviewed saying that we need a quarterback. And I mean, geez, look at, look at the, I mean, go ahead, go with the Carolina. But I was going to say, you look at the Saints. The Saints went out and got Andy Dalton, the backup, Jameis Winston over talking to the 49ers about Jimmy G. Well, how bad does Sean Payton look with that too? Because they re-slotted Taysom Hill. They reclassified him as a tight end. Right. That t- that contract looks even worse now. So the Saints would be would be wise to get in on him. The Panthers would be wise to get in on him. It's a buy low. You're buying low right now. And, you know, with the shoulder injury... The only difference between him and Baker Mayfield is that it was Baker's non-throwing shoulder. That's the one thing that would enhance Baker Mayfield's value over Jimmy Garoppolo. And it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they if Baker got moved before Jimmy got moved, just because it was Jimmy's throwing shoulder. More or less, number three, LeBron will pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the all-time scoring list one day. I mean, he should. He's been playing in the NBA for like 20 years, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like when Jeter got his 3,000 hit. He should have 3,000 hits. He played for like 20 years. Like, dude, and you were on that team. Like, come on. So for LeBron, he averages around 2,500 points per season. So if he plays 
two to three more years, he should. So I'm going to say more likely. I'm going more likely as well. He currently has 37,024 points. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has 38,387. So he's within striking distance. He's certainly within striking distance. And in a se- it's a season or two. It really is a season or two, provided he can stay healthy. Now, does he start to maneuver himself into more of a complementary role? Or does he really still demand being the guy? That's the one thing that you kind of need to to watch. But as close as he is, he should. He it's it's very it's more likely that it's going to happen. It's just it's a matter of time, and the situation is such as that he may very well hang on. And just be that guy, that bench piece, that veteran depth. And just ride it out until he gets there. We know that he wants to play with his son. It's a goal of his. He may very well make that happen and kill two birds with one stone. But time will tell. The one thing that we do know is father time is undefeated unless your name is Tom Brady. And... You know, LeBron is in recent years has been showing sign of physical deterioration, and who's to say that it doesn't continue? The Fade Store presents the alleged superstar of the week award. All right, boys and girls, it is time for the alleged superstar of the week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll of our nominees on our Twitter page at Fade Route DNZ, and you vote and vote and vote and vote. And the winner gets announced on our show. Nice. Do you know who took the ass home last week, D? I don't. The Cleveland Browns. For that very rich offer and the extension of Deshaun Watson. Very, very risky. Very, very risky. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees this week? All right. So first up, I've got Jimmy Ursay, owner of the, the Colts. Saying Carson Wentz was a terrible mistake after <laughs> trading the guy to the Washington Commanders. I know Carson Wentz was bad, but he still was two wins away from making the playoffs. I feel bad for Matt Ryan if he doesn't make the playoffs this year. Jim Ursay, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Next up, Cody Bellinger, former first round fantasy pick of mine, was 14, had 14 strikeouts and 19 at bats in spring, spring training this year. This is a former MVP and World Series champion. Chris Davis 2.0. You got to turn it around or you're not you're going to find yourself without a job. Cody Bellinger, you are my alleged superstar of the week and last certainly the least actor Will Smith walked up to the stage at the Academy Awards after Chris Rock insulted his wife and slapped him on national television. You know, the motto of this segment is do better, just do better. Will Smith you got to do better, man. You just got to do better. You are my alleged superstar of the week. What do you got, Z? All fine choices. I mean, Will Smith was nominated for an Academy Award when he played Muhammad Ali. Maybe he forgot who he was for a little bit. A little moment of temporary. He forgot that he and not greatest of all time. But for me, we're going to start with the Jacksonville Yes, the Jacksonville Jaguars are once again going to London. Stop. 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 Please stop going to London and stop sending the Jaguars to London. Jacksonville Jaguars, you are my alleged superstar of the week. 
while we're at it, the NFL for this bullshit overtime rule, especially since it's only in the playoffs. Please just put it back the way it was. Stop fucking around with the game. Just put it back the way it was. NFL, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Major League Baseball for announcing Home Run Derby X, the global tour featuring former players and influencers in order to grow the game outside of the United States. Stopping in London, Seoul, South Korea, Mexico City. Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? It's gonna it's a reduced version of a baseball field. Home plates on a stage. The pitcher's mounds on a podium. What is this? What what are you trying to do? Why? Why? It's just dumb. It's dumb. You're grow where, where are you gonna grow the game? You're not growing anything. The only thing you're doing is alienating the people that come to watch baseball. This is stupid. Major League Baseball, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, the Buffalo Bills. Congratulations, you got yourself a stadium. Congratulations. Public funds. $850 million of public funds towards this $1.4 billion cost. My taxes better not go up because of this. You know, we have one football team in this in the state of New York. It's you guys. And that is ridiculous. We have so many things that we can allocate that money to. And a roofless stadium in Orchard Park in Buffalo, New York is not one of them. I can think of many things that I can spend $850 million on before I get to the Buffalo Bills Stadium. Buffalo Bills, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our nominees. And for our nominees. Just do better, boys. Just do better. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today for all your Fade Route merch needs. I'm talking tank tops, t-shirts, sweatshirts, like yoga pants, we got those too. Like some cool accessories, we got those too. And we're not done yet. We have so much more planned for you, but check out what we have today at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ.com. Order up! All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to order up. Order up, order up. This week, we are ordering up the top five teams in baseball this season. From five to one, who you got, D? All right, I'm going to start off in the AL East with the Blue. Jays, Springer, Guerrero Jr., Chapman, Bo Bichette, Vigio. They lost Robbie Ray, but they can hit, and Cal is only allowing vaccinated players to come to town, so I think they have a good chance to uh, stay on top of the standings. At number four, I've got the Padres, new coach and Bob Melvin. Tatis Jr. will be out until July, but they'll get him back. Machado should have a better season, along with James Paddock. Musgrove, Clevenger, Darvish, Schnell. Pretty stellar staff. They'll contest the Dodgers for the West, or maybe like last year, the Giants. Uh, number three, 
White Sox, they should have won last year. Kopech is their fifth starter. Could you imagine that? <sighs> the bats are mighty. Grandel, Jimenez, Tim Anderson, Lewis Roberts, who is my sneaky pick for MVP, and Jose Abreu. Uh, number two. The Braves, baby. Eddie Rosario. Ozzy Albies, Matt Olson, Marcelo Suna, Adam Duvall, Dansby Swanson. That's their first. That's their top seven lineup. Yes, please. And in pitching, we got Fried, Morton, hopefully Soroka someday. Anderson, you know what? Not bad. Not bad. But number one, spending all the money, getting all the players. It's the Dodgers, man. Kershaw, Bueller, and Urias are back. They pick up Freddie Freeman to team with Betts, Muncie, and Turner. And that's Trey Turner. Hard not to like their chances. What do you got, Z? Well, all good choices. All good choices. I'm still not sold on the Braves pitching. I think they they desperately needed more. So they're close. They're definitely they're near, if not on my list. Number five, I like what the Mets have done. I love the Canna edition. He gives you corner flexibility. He can also play the infield. I like Starling Marte in center. The Max Scherzer thing, if Jacob deGrom goes down, you're covered. But a healthy deGrom and a healthy Scherzer, Scherzer went down with a dead arm, if we all remember from last year. Like This is very risky, but the talent is there for the Mets this year. Number four, I, I got to say, like as as much as this pains me to do so, like I like what the Phillies are doing. You know, they brought in Schwarber, they brought in Castellanos, they brought, you know, they they have an offense. They need more pitching, but like the offense is definitely going to play. And you know, Nola Wheeler, they can definitely get more guys. Their bullpen, it's a little shaky, but their offense is going to rake. Number three, status quo with the Padres. They didn't really do that much. You know, you're, you're banking on a healthy Clevenger. You already have a loaded team. Tatis is out right now, but when you have an all-star at almost every position, you can absorb losing a player, even a player as good as Fernando Tatis Jr. So a healthy Clevenger, like right now he's your number seven. So maybe he'll make it into the maybe he'll make it into the top four. Maybe you'll you'll need him, but I I like their chances. Number two, I really like what the Blue Jays are doing. You bring in Barrios. Yes, you lost Ray, but then you go around. You go get Matt Chapman. You lost Trevor Simeon. Uh, not Trevor Simeon. Marcus Simeon. I did it again. That's unbelievable. But uh, you lose that. You get Matt Chapman. Oh no. You know, Matt Chapman's, you know, no slouch. So they should make a lot of noise with that team. And number one, we're in agreement. The checkbook is open. The Dodgers, the Dodgers, the Dodgers. Now, they upgraded with addition by subtraction because Kenley Jansen is on your Braves. We got to see who they're going to get to close out games. Maybe they'll have David Price do it. Like, that would make a lot of sense because David Price did come up as a closer. But, um, yeah, you, you got to like what the Dodgers, you know, bring to the table because they brought it all. <laughs> they took everything and didn't leave much for everybody else. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. You can catch our podcast Wednesday nights on the Anchor, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go route, but we'll talk to you next week. If you want to get on the action, we want to hear from you. Hit us up at Fade Route Podcast on IG, FadeRouteMail at gmail.com, or slide in our DMs at Twitter at FadeRouteDNZ. Questions, comments, picks, segment suggestions, you name it. We want to hear from you. Get at us in crowd.